Hi everybody, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. I'm Richard. Today we're going to be taking a look at another competition gun or a race gun. This is the Canic Rival and it is a pretty nice looking gun too. Real similar to the TP9 SFX. This is the Canic Rival SFX. This one is in uh, gray and gold. It's got some uh, pretty fancy features on it. This is everything that's going to come in the case and there's quite a bit in there. You've got the firearm itself. Now this one is not mine. It is a loaner and it is equipped with a hollow sun red dot on here or R RMR rugged or rugged miniature red dot sight. I like the hollow suns. I got the little solar panel on the top there that helps keep it doing its thing. Plus it's a light sensor. So if you're in extremely bright light, it will brighten up. If you're in dim lighting conditions, the red dot will dim some. Now this one is a wake and shake and wake. So when you pick it up, it turns on. You can turn it off. There's adjustments on the side there for the brightness. And I think if you hold both buttons, it, um, it will turn off. I'm not a big fan of red dots, but like I said, this is a loner. It's not mine. So the owner wanted a red dot. It is unloaded. I have previously had it out of here and there's nothing inside of it. It's a full size gun, so it's not going to be a little compact thing. It does come with a holster. Now, usually the holster will be in the case in there, but with the red dot on it and everything, it doesn't seem to fit in the case really well, but uh, it's a I guess it's a Kydex. It's some sort of, sort of plastic anyways. A uh, pretty decent holster. It's going to come with two magazines. It's going to come with some different plates that uh, are going to be made for different red dots. Uh, it's got all kinds of little tools in here. There's a little tool here for um, doing the, the plates and everything on there. Put that back in there. It's going to come with your lock, of course. Uh, some chamber flags and different little pieces and parts and everything, I think. Uh, let's see what this is. That's your chamber flag right there. Yeah, there's all kind of things in here. And in the top of it, you're going to have some parts for a cleaning kit. You're going to have a brush and a uh, patch um, puller thingy. You're going to have another tool in here. This is... A, another little uh, Torx screwdriver. So it's got a, no, it's not a Torx, is it? No, it's one of their punch tools. Uh, it does come with quite a bit of things. And it even comes with this cute little miniature uh, <laughs> Canic Rival in there. And this is actually a tool. It is a wrench. It's got a little socket head in there. So it's just like uh, one of the Tauruses I've got comes with another little tool. It's going to come with a couple extra back straps on there. It's also going to have three different magazine release buttons on here. So if you want to extend that out, there's a small, medium, a large one, two, and three, but it's pretty easy one to get to. It does have a 90 degree flat face trigger on there and it's got some nice serrations on it. A nice big slide stop on the, on the side there and it will lock open on the last round. So that's a nice feature. I do like that. Then you can eject your magazine, put your next one in there, and then you're ready to go. Take down on this thing is a piece of cake. We'll get this case out of the way. All you got to do is it's got a cocking indicator on the back of it there. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and make sure it's unloaded, pointed in a safe direction. You're going to do a trigger pull on it. Then you're going to get these two little ears on the sides here, right in front of the slide stop. And you're going to pull back just a little bit, pull those down. Take your thumb, let it go forward, oh, about a half inch. Pull the top right off. Take your recoil spring out. Take your barrel out. And then installation or um, putting it back together is just the opposite of what you just did. Put your barrel back in there. It is a nice captive unit on the recoil spring. I do like that. Put it back behind the lug there. You're not going to slide it all the way on. You're going to do it about the same distance you took it off. You can see a little notch right here in the slide and a little piece sticking out there on your rail. Line those up. Ah, I did not have the recoil spring in there all the way. There we go. Now it just pops right back on there. It's got a pretty nice trigger on it. It's a, there's a little bit of take up on it and it breaks pretty nice. Reset is, oh, probably about an eighth of an inch or so. So it's a pretty short reset on it. 
Yeah, it's a pretty good feeling trigger in there. Now, the owner did say it was a little gritty when he first got it. He's fired a few rounds through it, and it has loosened up quite a bit. I got to do that takedown thing again because that was kind of embarrassing. All right, pulled that up, pulled that off, pulled the barrel out, put it back in. Make sure your recoil spring is all the way behind the lug there, and there we go. That was a whole lot better. And it's a pretty good looking gun anyways. It does come with some high vis uh, red dot sight on the front of it. But like I said, the owner took the um, iron sights off and put the red dot on there. Nice serrations on the slide, really heavy ones on there. And it is a ported slide, so that's gonna lighten it up just a little bit. It is not a ported barrel, but it does have a threaded cap on this barrel here. And you cannot see the the break on there, uh, barely, I can barely see where it's, um, where the line is there, but there's a special tool. You'll need to take that off if you're going to put a, um, suppressor on there or any kind of muzzle device on there. Anyways, I got my Peltor range gear ears here. So we're going to take these out to the range and, uh, safety glasses, and we're going to fire off a few rounds and see how it shoots. All right, we're out here on the range with the Canic Rival, and I've got a box of Winchester 9mm Wind Clean. This is Target ammo. It's a uh, copper jacketed uh, soft point ammo. I guess you'd say kind of like a wad cutter. Um, got a flat point on. Now, this will pretty much mimic uh, most hollow points anyways, instead of just the full metal jacket stuff. Plus, I've had these for a while, and I figured it's time to rotate the stock, huh? Uh, one of the things I did not mention earlier was that it does come with a loading tool for your magazine there. It's slid right over the end of it and in the case there. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the 18 rounds loaded in here. A lot of times I like to put that first round in there first. That way the uh, little piece inside the magazine loading tool is not pushing on the follower, but will be pushing on another round. And then it's pretty easy just to slide them right in. Well, I say that and yeah, there we go. These got a pretty steep angle on them there. So to me, it makes it a little bit harder. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it just doesn't seem to want to go in the greatest anyways. I'd almost rather do it by hand. I'm only going to put five rounds in there right now because I'm going to go ahead and use the matrix and I've got one of the little targets set up there and we're going to check it for accuracy anyways. Uh, I'm not used to a red dot. I've said it many times. I don't like them. I prefer iron sights and it's probably just because I'm just not used to them. I don't fire them as much. I'm going to go ahead and holster it, get the cameras all set up so you guys can see and then we'll take a few shots. Okay, I'm only going to be shooting from 10 yards right here. Get my range guards on and turned on, get the eyes on. Now the Canic is a nine millimeter, in case I forgot to mention that. It is 18 rounds in the magazine. I've only got five loaded in here right now. It is a 8.09 inches overall length. It's got a five inch barrel on it. So it is a full size gun. It's 5.7 inches tall, a little bit taller with the uh, red dot on it. Uh, only an inch and a quarter wide. And with an empty magazine in it, it weighs 29.45 ounces. We're going to go ahead and get one loaded in there. And like I said, I'm not a red dot guy, but I'm going to try to uh, see if I can get some shots in the center of that target up there. Not sure where that one hit, but I took my time with it and got the red dot centered up on it. Yeah, I can see them now. They look pretty good. Okay, it locked open on the last round, which is what it's supposed to do. Pop that magazine out. We'll go ahead and drop the slide holster and go look at the target. Five shots right there. That's pretty darn good grouping right there from 10 yards away. So the owner has put the red dot on there and he went ahead and sighted it in. And that looks pretty good to me. Now I've got the two silhouette targets set up here. Let's do a little bit of center mass stuff here offhand, seven yards. And then maybe we'll do a little bit of two and two and transition between targets. And then uh, I finally put some fresh paint on the steel target up there. 
All right, so that was five shots for an accuracy test there. And I tried to eliminate as much human element as possible by resting it in the matrix there and seeing how that does. And that did really, really well. The red dot sight is pretty much on target. Um, that little bit of pulling to the left there could possibly be me, but it shoots pretty good anyways. Now I am loading up, I'm gonna go ahead and load 18 rounds in this first magazine anyways, because I want to just see how it performs with the full magazine. A lot of times with newer guns, there's a little bit of a break in period with the magazine and sometimes they don't wanna feed correctly on that first or second round. I don't know if the owner experienced that or not, but, um, and I also want to see how tough these things are to load by hand to get it all the way into that 18th round. And not terrible at all. There are some holes on the back there so you can see if it's a fully loaded magazine. I think on the second one, I'm just gonna go ahead and put two in there because I like doing that two and two swapping thing there. And I don't have a holster pouch for these magazines. So I'm just gonna put it in my back pocket and go from there. Okay, now it's a full size gun, so it's not the best choice for concealed carry, I would say. Uh, and it rides, I got it on my regular uh, belt here, my regular gun belt, and it rides a little high on here, which is okay. Um, but like I said, it, it's not a concealed carry gun and I've got a little bit of bulky clothes on today because it's chilly out here. All right, we'll go ahead and load that 18 round magazine up there. We're gonna take about five shots at center mass there and see how it does offhand. And this will be seven yards right here. All right, that's not terrible. Uh, now this one does not have a safety on it either. So it is, you know, more of a, it's a competition gun. A lot of times competition guns don't have safeties on them. Uh, I am not used to a red dot. So after that first shot, it took me a second to find out where that red dot was. And uh, I'm just so used to open sights. But as far as uh, center mass goes right there, I've got uh, one, maybe one in the nine ring. I've got uh, one, two, three in the 10 ring and one directly in the X right there. It didn't have any problems with those first or second shots and with the uh, fully loaded magazine. So it seems to do pretty good. Let's go ahead and take a couple head shots. All right, there's five head shots there. Uh, I only see four holes. May, oh no, the other one's down in the neck there. It's still pretty good, but it's a little hard for me to get used to that red dot there. So that was 10 shots there. I've got eight more left in here. Um, let's back the cameras up a little bit and I'll do a little bit of two and two, I guess, uh, you know, switching between targets there anyways. All right, since I've already got a couple holes in that first target there, these suck in the winter time with all these clothes on. Since I've already got a couple holes in the, uh, the first target there, I'm gonna aim for the number eight on there, put two, go two on the number eight on that one, and then maybe switch over to that uh, steel target there. Like I said, no safety on it, it's ready to go. Yeah, that's not too bad right there. Let's see, that was, uh, I should have two more rounds left in there. Let's do two quick headshots on the uh, one that I did not put any shots in yet. See that, that red dot's hard for me to find for some reason. Two of them right there in his neck. It did lock open on the last round. We'll kick that out. I got the other one in my pocket. Now this has got a nice big flared magwell on it. So it is really easy to just slam that thing right up in there. I only had two rounds in there. Pretty nice gun. It's just, I am used to open sights on their iron sights. The red dot throws me off. All right, guys, there it is. The Canic Rival. Now I don't want to spend a whole lot of time doing a whole bunch of shooting with it. I don't really need to. I really need to practice with a red dot, but uh, it's not my gun. Uh, it is a great shooting gun. I think if you really want to get into competition, this would be one of the ones to go for. Now, when I did the other Canic, uh, not the Rivals, the Canic uh, TPSFX9, that's a mouthful there. Uh, I, I discovered that those are pretty nice guns too. I like the feel of them. 
Uh, it's got good, comfortable grip on it. It's uh, got a little stippling on the sides there, which is a little, now I wouldn't say it's overly aggressive, but it feels pretty good. Now it doesn't offer any cushioning to your hand. Uh, it does seem to have a little bit of muzzle flip to it, and it's got a little bit of weight to it too. So really it's, um, it, it's, it's not bad. I think I would probably see about putting a compensator on the front of it, maybe. Um, they do seem to help. Um, me personally, I would get the red dot off of there, even though I do, I, out of all the red dots out there, I do like the Holosuns. They are really good red dots. Uh, good feeling gun, good and comfortable and everything. The right size for competition. Uh, just not in the winter time with a bunch of clothes on. Um, good looking, good shooting, good trigger in it too. I do like the trigger. And the thing about Canics is, uh, they are not extremely expensive either. That's the really nice thing about it. You can buy some competition guns and spend a whole lot of money on them. You're not gonna do that with the Canik um, because you just don't need to. They are good pretty much right out of the box. Uh, I believe they're made in Turkey and I'm not sure what he paid for this one, but uh, I'm not even sure what the MSRP is on it, but I'll go ahead and put it up here. And if you want to check one out, go visit your local gun store and check one out because they do really feel good. Anyways, thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review and checking out the Canic Rival with me. And uh, if you could reach up here and hit this button to check out some of my other videos and hit the little round one down here to subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review.